Dave Barry, alongside National Basketball Recruiting Director Rob Cassidy and Jason Jordan, Recruiting Analyst. Guys, the initial 2026 rankings are out. Uh, you have you you know laid out the the top guys in the class. Rob, I want to start with you and ask you just initially the first the, the few guys on this list that jump out to you as some of the top or more intriguing prospects out there. Well, you know, it starts up top, you know, with A.J. DeBansa. He's clearly the number one prospect. I don't think you'll be able to find anybody to, to take anybody else in this class as it goes right now. We've written a lot about him and talked a lot about him. He's already on NBA Scouts Radar, uh, being discussed as a potential, you know, possible number one to five pick down the road. You know, he's got it all. He's got the length. He handles it pretty well. He played U17 in the Peach Jam this year. Uh, and absolutely dominated. Was one of the top scorers in the division uh, playing up in age group. Uh, and then when you get further down the list, there's some more interesting, like, potential guys that are ranked on potential that aren't really that level but might climb up the rankings. You get to, you know, an offspring like Brandon Bass Jr., whose dad played a long time in the NBA, played at LSU. He's all 6'5". He scores the ball incredibly well. And if he adds weight and becomes more of a distributor, you know, a defender, he's a guy that I think can skyrocket up the list. We put him near the bottom uh, right now just because he hasn't really put it all together yet. But he's down there in Florida, and I expect him to play well and move up over the next couple of years. All right. And then, Jason, what about you? Give me give me a few guys that are on your uh, list of, of intriguing or top guys. Yeah, yeah well, I totally agree with Rob about AJ. I mean, bar none. Um, Tyron Stokes is obviously number two. I don't think anybody else has a different one or two than those guys. Um, and for good reason. I say the one that stands out to me is uh, Caden Allen. I think he's a guy that could really um, shoot up the list over the next year. He's playing at Montverde this year. Six five does a lot of different things. Well, productive i like to say the word productive with him um just because he's comfortable inside and out and he'll be playing at like i said at montverde and on that stage because they're so loaded he'll be he'll have to show flashes i think um i mean cooper flag liam mcneely curtis gibbons uh you know Derek queen playing against those guys every day in practice might make you a little bit better and then uh you know him playing a role where you know, people can't key in on him. I I think, like I said, he'll be able to show those flashes very similar to the way Derek Whitehead did when he was on those traveling all-star teams. Um, and so I think those flashes will propel his his status and his um, – I could see him, him moving up because of that. Yeah, it's going to be good for him down there, I think. You know, yeah. he was in Georgia last year, and he was on a pretty good team there in Georgia. But it's different. Like you said, if I'm for, you know, you're battling for playing time, especially oh, this young, and having to go up against those dudes every day is going to uh, – should press him. And, you know, I really like the steps that he took this year, and he'll, he'll take more in the future. Yeah. All right, good stuff, you guys. This is our first look, the top 65 prospects in the 2026 class. There's going to be plenty more to come, but keep it locked to Rivals for more information around this uh, rankings release. Rob and Jason, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dave.